welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you want to check them out. Today's tutorial is based around April's flock box. If you guys don't know what my Drunk Flamingo flock box is, that is my mystery box that is released each month that includes four new glitters, two new patterned vinyl sheets, and one white backed decal. This month was a little special because it included one of our new items, which was vinyl pin wraps. I may do a tutorial on that one next, but you'll just have to wait and see. Everything you see here will be covered in today's tutorial. I love how this stripe tumbler turned out. I think the colors and the vinyl and decal all went really well together. And I hope you guys loved this flock box if you were able to snag one. If you guys have any questions about products I used or steps that I did, please feel free to ask in the comment section or in one of my tutorial groups on Facebook. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. Alright y'all, so before we get started, I'm going to go over the items that we're going to use. These are the colors that were in April's flock box. We have pink bikini, beach house, beachside bonfire, and sea breeze. I love these colors. I had them custom made, so they're all the same cut. I love the mini chunky mix. It is one of my favorite cuts of glitter to use. This was our decal, and I'm just going to peel the back up so you guys can see that it is an opaque background. So you can apply these decals to any color tumbler. And here were the two patterned vinyl sheets that were included. These items were definitely kind of vacation themed. And I thought that was perfect for this time of year. So I took elements that I used to create the vinyl and use them to create the decal as well. So everything flows together. So we are going to start with a 30 ounce skinny and I have to tell you guys about these tumbler grips. If y'all have not tried the tumbler grip, their arms or their turners, I do suggest them. I have four grips from them and one turner. They expand to fit pretty much any tumbler. And I have magnetic arms. If you guys want to try them, I do have a discount code, which is damn fancy. It will get you 10% off your first order, excluding covered tumblers. I also love my Cami Page Boutique tools. We also have a discount code for her, which is damn fancy. So I am just going to start by cutting off all of the white edges of my vinyl. The reason I do this is so when I go to cut my strips or just cut your vinyl in general, those edges are going to be straight and the white edges are not going to interfere with how straight your vinyl is on your cup. And obviously we don't want white pieces on our finished tumbler. So I am just going to start by taking my little Cricut cutting tool. I don't know where I got this. I've had it forever, but I am just going to cut some strips out. I don't really have a plan at this moment but I know that I don't want my strips to be the same size. I just want them different sizes. And when I'm cutting this particular pattern, I'm trying to get all of the elements in there. So I don't wanna cut in the middle of some of my elements. I want you to be able to see the full image. So I don't want only half of a camera to be on there or half of a compass. If I can help it, I would rather have the full image. 
So I'm just trimming a couple of these stripes. I want to leave enough room at the top so my decal fits nicely. So I'm going to take my cup holder from Cami Page Boutique and I'm just going to draw a straight line. This will ensure that our vinyl is going to be straight on our tumbler. She also has other tools that can help you get a straight line, but a lot of her tools can be used multiple ways. Her cup holder is one of those ways where you can use it as a cup cradle or use it as a tool to get a straight line on your cup. So I am applying one stripe. If you guys did not see, I just cut a small piece of the vinyl off of my backing or a small piece of backing off of my vinyl, I should say. So it acted kind of like a hinge. And I just wrap that vinyl around until I'm sure that it will meet up evenly with the other side. Y'all see me do this with all of my stripes. And I am using my heat gun just to help that vinyl really adhere to my cup. Sometimes we all know vinyl can kind of get wrinkly at the ends or if you have a bubble in there, just heating it up makes it a little bit more flexible. So y'all saw that I cut the backing off I am wrapping it around, making sure that it's going to line up with that other side. And I just like to use my squeegee just to smooth it out. And then I just cut off that edge. So I'm going to do the exact same thing to the last two strips of vinyl that I have. This one was just slightly uneven, so I just used my blade just to trim off that tiny, tiny piece of vinyl. Honestly, pinstripes probably could have covered that. I'm also just trimming off any excess vinyl that I see. If this were a larger piece of vinyl, I would typically use painter's tape for my guide, but on something that is less than an inch wide, I'm not too concerned about it. So I cut this last strip a little bit. The vinyl was taking up a little more space than I wanted to. So we're just trimming it because I wanted to make sure that my decal was going to fit nicely. And also, because I'm sure this has happened to some people, I just want to remind you guys that if you are applying vinyl to a tumbler, make sure that your pattern is going the correct way. You don't want to put your stripes on and all of your items be upside down and then have to remove them, take them off, and fix them. So I'm just trimming off the overlap here. Again, if this was a larger piece of vinyl, I would have used painter's tape as my guide. Now I'm going to put my grip back in my tumbler. I love to decorate using these, it's just so simple. So I'm going to use Artistry's glitter glue to apply all of my glitter. If you guys have not tried their products, I highly suggest them. 
I was that person who was always applying glitter with either clear spray paint or epoxy until I found glitter glue. And now this is pretty much all I use. I find that the glitter application is very similar to epoxy. The glitter glue is nothing like Mod Podge. I find that it evens out in a very similar way as epoxy. You're not going to get streaks and I always only need one coat. So I'm just sprinkling my glitter on and similar to epoxy, the glitter glue will soak up that glitter. So I always like to do two little rotations of glitter just to make sure everything is covered well. And for this particular tumbler, I wanted my glitter to be on the lighter side just to kind of match the vinyl that was on the tumbler. However, if you wanted your colors to be brighter or pop more, you could have definitely used um, Color Fix Paint, which also has a glitter glue mixed in so that the underneath color would kind of boost those colors a little bit and they would be more on the brighter side versus the pastel side. And for the stripes, I am just going in with a smaller paintbrush. If you feel more comfortable taping off your vinyl, you definitely can do that. But for a tumbler like this, since I know that the edges are going to be outlined in pinstripes, it is okay if you have a little bit of a bare spot or a little bit of that glitter gets on the vinyl. I mean, for me, it's pretty easy to control when you're painting it with a paintbrush, but just in case there was any tiny little mistake, typically that can usually be covered with the pinstripes that we are going to apply later on. And for those of you wondering, we do have a discount code for artistry. You can use code DAMNFANCY, which is pretty much my code for all of my favorite suppliers. But other items I love from them are their one to one fast set, their epoxy hand scrub, um, sticky situation, their glitter glue, obviously, color fix paints. So this last color we're applying is Beach House. I think this might be my favorite color from this box. I could honestly see a color like this on a beach house. So now we are going to let this glitter glue dry. And then we are going to come back and seal everything in with quick seal. And with glitter glue, depending on how thick your glue application is, will depend on the dry time. If I do thin layers, it's typically dry in about 30 minutes but I like to wait a few hours until I seal everything in just in case there was a thick glob somewhere that I didn't see. So we're going to use Quick Seal, also from Artistry, to seal in this glitter. Usually when I seal my glitter, I like to use a clear spray paint. However, if I do have vinyl on my tumblers, I do not like to use clear spray paint because a lot of the times clear spray paint will react with the vinyl and it can cause the edges to curl and lift 
And that is definitely something that you don't want to happen, especially if you just spent all this time creating this pretty tumbler. You don't want something like a sealer to ruin all your hard work you just did. So I have never had an issue with quick seal reacting to anything. So I will just seal in my vinyl and my glitter. I typically don't seal vinyl, but just because the vinyl is next to the glitter, I'm just sealing everything. Just in case there are any drips, I don't want those drips to harden. So I'm just going ev over everything with my paintbrush just to make sure everything is smoothed out, no drips, nothing like that. And I believe the dry time on quick seal is about 30 minutes. But depending on how cold or warm it is, that could be different. Again, I still like to wait a couple hours before I epoxy, after I apply quick seal. And it really does not take a lot of this sealer. I just barely dip my brush in and it's enough to get good coverage. I think I poured five mils into this cup and y'all can see I'm barely used any of it. So I'm going to put two layers of epoxy on this tumbler. And after I epoxy, I like to break out my edging tool from Cami Page Boutique and go around the edge with the blade to get a smooth rim. Do not do this just on a tumbler that you pulled off your turner. I always like to run the tumbler edge under hot water to soften it just enough so that that blade cuts through. If I'm doing this on my own and not filming, I can usually get the epoxy rim off in like one long piece, which is super satisfying. But usually when I'm filming, I'm doing a million other things. But as long as you can get that epoxy off the rim, you get a nice, clean rim that's even. If you try to do this without softening the top edge, you could break the seal. So you definitely wanna make sure that that epoxy at the very top rim is warm enough for that blade to cut. So after I get that epoxy off of the rim, I'm just going to take some alcohol or acetone and go around the rim, get off any of that glitter or spray paint residue. And now we have a nice clean rim. So now that our tumbler has been sanded, our rim has been cleaned, we are going to apply our decal and our pinstripes. So I'm just going to peel off my decal and just center it as best I can. I already was thinking this tumbler was turning out so cute. And I'm just using the textured gold from Cricut for my pinstripes. If you guys did not know, I do have a pinstripe file up on the drunkflamingo.com. I got requests for that for the longest time, so I did put one together. It has my most favorite sizes, which is 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. I like to cut out full sheets of pinstripes when I cut out a color of pinstripes. That way I just have tons of them on hand. I'm not having to cut out four pinstripes at a time just to use them. And I like the different sizes in case I want to layer them or put some next to each other. Just give that line variation. And if y'all did not see, I am using Brooke's Cup Cradle, the one from Cami Page Boutique. It makes doing pinstripes so easy. The tumbler just turns so easy when I'm doing pinstripes instead of trying to like roll it on the table or hold it in your lap or even using a big bulky cup cradle. This one, I love. It's so compact, it's so small. If you guys are planning on purchasing something from Brooke, again, our code is damn fancy, but I highly suggest her edging tool, the cup cradle, and the ultimate tumbler guide tool. She also has super cute acrylic blanks 
that are engraved. So it makes decorating them a lot easier. And here goes Birdie carrying her toy outside. So I decided to add pinstripes to the top of this tumbler. I felt like the top rim was just a little bare. So those pinstripes kind of balanced out. The bottom of the tumbler and the top of the tumbler. And this was one of those times where I was struggling to get that pinstripe even it was driving me crazy. Like sometimes your eyes play tricks on you and you think something is lower than it is. I think I redid this one like five times. <laughs> So I worked in sections and got it done. So here you can see I'm using two different sizes. I usually use 0 .07 if I'm just doing a single pinstripe. And then if I layer them, I usually do 0 0.07 and 0 0.05 or 0 0.07 and 0 0.03. So now I am going to take some pinstripes and I'm just going to kind of outline the different sections and put some pinstripes in the middle of the vinyl just to bring out some more of that gold. I think it would be also fun to do different colored pin stripes. If you had like a light blue or a light pink, you could do that in between. But if I sit and think about it too much, I will never make a decision because I just see all the possibilities and then I won't be able to decide, which is usually why I just go with gold. Gold tends to go with most things. So after you get your pinstripes on, I'm sure most of y'all like to seal your pinstripes. We don't want them to lift under epoxy. So my favorite way to seal pinstripes is with UV resin. I don't seal the entire pinstripe with UV resin, but I like to put just a small dot of UV resin where the pinstripes overlap because that is typically the most common place that they will lift under epoxy and we want to prevent that from happening. So if they are already held down with UV resin, they are not going to lift. So I'm just putting the tiniest amount just where the vinyl overlaps 
and then I will cure this for about two minutes. You can always touch it to see if it's still tacky. If it is still tacky, it will need to cure for a little longer. And, and then when I am using this textured vinyl, I always seal with quick coat. Who remembers why I don't use clear spray paint? If you said it was because it will cause the vinyl to lift and curl, you are correct. Anytime I try to seal metal textured holographic vinyl with clear spray paint, it always reacts funny. It can cause the vinyl to lift or curl. And of course, even at this late stage of the game, we don't want that to ruin our cup. So I'm using quick coat to seal. I always seal my textured vinyl. If I were using a matte or regular gloss adhesive vinyl for my pinstripes, I would not seal. However, just through trial and error, I have learned that epoxy does not stick well to this textured vinyl. I have had vinyl come off large pieces of a textured vinyl decal because it just wasn't adhered to it. There was an air bubble. I was able to peel off all of the epoxy that was over the textured vinyl so from that day forward i always seal textured vinyl with something some type of clear sealer so after this clear sealer dries we are going to epoxy two more times and then your tumbler will be complete here are some finished images of the tumbler i really think this turned out cute i think it's a good kind of exploring vacation RV camper kind of cup. If you guys purchased April's flock box, please be sure to post pictures of your creations in the Drunk Flamingo because I love to see what you guys come up with. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook, my Drunk Flamingo Glitter Group, or my Damn Fancy Tribe. All are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!